Well, today, a gentleman brought in a Tika 25 odd 6 for a rebarrel. I've been excited about doing a Tika for a long time. This will be the first Tika I ever rebarreled. Everything I read is pretty straightforward, so follow along as we turn this uh, 25 odd 6 slow twist Tika into a 25 odd 6 fast twist Tika. Let's get to it. So we got the action off. Um, I'm actually a little bit concerned how easy this action came off. I have never seen an action that loose from a factory rifle. Not complaining, usually you fight them. The next thing we'll do is we'll take all our measurements and build our blues, build ourselves a blueprint for the tenant. All right, doing a barrel inspection here. First McGowan I ever looked into um, they are obviously hand lapped. You can see the lapping that's been done. Uh, this is the very end here. This will all get cut out, but you see that it's thinner there because of all the lapping they do. But going down, I don't see any flaws to be concerned with. Life is actually pretty dang good. I'm, for the money, this barrel is pretty legit. All right, this tenon is as extremely straightforward as it could be. Uh, the bolt from the bolt face to the end of the receiver is one inch ten thousandths, so we'll cut this one inch. And the threads are one inch in diameter, 16 threads per inch. So that's pretty brainless. And we have no chamfers, no angles, no nothing whatsoever here. So. This will be a pretty straightforward uh, tenon to cut. All right, now I gotta start the indication process. This is always a long, boring, tedious job. We gotta make sure the barrel bore is perfectly concentric to the bore of the machine. We'll lift this up a little bit get around zero and we just go back and forth to get it angular corrected on all four sides and then we go up and down with it to adjust this so let's get after it all right over five inches we got the up and down set next thing we're going to do is flip it 180 degrees to here, sorry, not 180 degrees, 90 degrees, start the process all over again. This one really ain't too far off. Okay, we gotta move it about a thou. to zero here there we go over five inches we're far less than a thou okay next thing we gotta do is adjust our angular our run out around see we're about well, we're 12 thousands out of whack so I'll start that adjustment and bring it back more close all right, we got it all indicated here. Go out over five inches, we're still on zero. So if we come up here and raise this old girl up just a little bit, then drop her down. This is why we indicate to the bore of the machine. We're going on the outside where each one of them are thou one, two, three, or four thousands out. So <clears throat> if we would have just indicated off the outside, like you see here, 
instead of all the inside of the bore, the chamber would have four thousandths of run out. And that wouldn't let the bullet start straight down the chamber, so that would be bad. But we got it all indicated. Set the machine over here to cut a one inch tenon in diameter, one inches long at 16 threads per inch. Pretty simple. Take a scratch pass just to make sure we are cutting 16 threads per inch. Zero out my readout here. I'm going away, here comes four. Got our thread pitch gauge. And we are at 16 threads per inch. I got the action here. Back this out so you don't scratch it. It screws on nice. No play. To get into the shoulder, don't quite match up perfectly. So I'm going to take about a 15, 20 thousandths pass off here so it blends in like the old action did. All right, our action threads are nice and tight, no slop. Our measurements say it's got to be right at one inch, plus or minus two thousandths. So we'll go here, and we are right at 101. So we're within spec there. All right, we found the largest pilot that fits in there smoothly with no force, no play. So that takes up all our slop. 2508. So I'll put this pilot on the reamer. We'll indicate a reamer and get a chamber. All right, got the reamer holder all indicated in. Life is good there. Sorry about the bad camera shaking. Next thing we're gonna do is cut our chamber. All righty. Turn on oil pressure flush. Oh, a little too much. Back that down a little. And let's start chambering this rifle. All right, we got a 7,000 sphere gauge that just barely fits in spots. So 7,000 plus and thousands of crush is eight plus three. We should be 10 and a half more thousands deeper and we should be good to go. Let's do it. Alrighty, oil's coming on. Oil's starting. Three, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Zero that out. 
cut this off. And we should be pretty dang close. All right, the moment of truth, we got the action. Snugged on there pretty good. We'll take the go gauge. There it goes. Take this out. Put in the no go gauge. Hard stop. So she's had space. I got the action all torqued down the vise. Here's our go gauge. Nice and smooth. Here's our no go gauge. Hard stop. We're good to go. Next thing is the muzzle work. All right, this customer wants this rifle threaded 5 8 by 24, <clears throat> which is great. But the issue we come up with is this rifle barrel is only 700 thousandths in diameter. So that doesn't leave much room for a shoulder. So what we're going to do is take this piece of stainless steel barrel that I parted off, drill it and tap it 5 8 by 24. I'll cut the threads deeper and we'll Screw this on here with some red Loctite. We'll screw it on super duper tight so it'll never come off. The Loctite sets in. And then I'll single point this at the same time I uh, finish up the threads. And then we'll contour everything so it, it looks good. This gives us a big shoulder to use or to go up against for the suppressor. So everything looks neat and tidy when we're done. All right, the threaded collar is done. Next step, cut the threads for the muzzle. All right, got the barrel all indicated. Now we're gonna take our cuts. It's gonna come over 810 thousandths. Go down to six and a quarter. Once we're at six and a quarter, we'll cut our relief. After we cut our relief, we'll cut our threads. After we throw our threads, Put this on, then we'll true this face, and we'll lock tight this on, and after that's done, we will uh, cut our crown, and it's ready to go back at the stock. All right, we got the threads all cut. Everything measures the way it's supposed to, size-wise. Put a pretty healthy liberal amount of thread locker right here. Take this jewel, screw it on. And we'll get her good and tight. Now that it's good and tight, we'll let it sit so that can epoxy in place. Once it's epoxied in place, we'll uh, contour this. And then I'll come in here with the bit and this bit will flush this thing up. Then we'll face this to our 600 thousandths, cut our crown, cut our relief here for our threads to start, and we're done. And just like that, she's done. Take her out of here and put her back in the stock. All right. So we got it set up. It's 25 by six, McGallan one and seven twist. We can frame it with our laser machine here. You can see it coming. And now we push play and it'll start marking it. There 
And just like that, we got our mark. This will run through three times. And then it'll be done. I'll just let it run through once. And then I'll shut it off. Show you a picture when it's done. All right, it's all done being marked. Take this stuff here. Just a mystery eraser. Polish it off. Everything looks great. Well, that pretty much sums up this one. Uh, it was pretty straightforward, easy action to, uh, to rebarrel. I look forward to doing a lot more Tikas. If anybody's got any Tikas that they want rebarreled, definitely looking for more work. Uh, these are very fun and straightforward actions to build off of. Got a lot more videos coming. I'm building a 6.5 Creedmoor, 270 Winchester short mag, and a 6.5 short action ultra mag this week. I look forward to showing you guys them builds. And until next time, look forward to seeing you back, and God bless.